Hello, good morning, how are we? Yes, I haven't taken this sweatsuit off since we last saw each other. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> um, welcome to another reading vlog. It's a gorgeous day today, feeling good. I uh, bought this new sourdough from this bakery really close to my work. Um, don't mind my crazy cat, He's he's been having a morning. Anyways, I um, bought this delicious sourdough from this bakery next door and it was delicious. I had it with almond butter and honey and uh, drinking my hazelnut vanilla OG tea. What else has happened these days? Um, Charlie got a crazy good LSAT score, 170. He's a genius, he's a star. I don't know why I'm bragging. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably like why are you talking about this anyways um so that was cool we went to this really delicious lunch spot to eat some Lebanese food that was delicious uh we went to this other little cafe that has arguably the best coffee which granted like what do I know about coffee since like here I am drinking tea and that's all I drink <laughs> but I really like the coffee from that place and he now let's turn this into a uh, book related chatter. He got me a Spanish book because he's been wanting me to read slash like I've just thought to myself now that I'm reading a lot of translated literature, especially translated from Spanish, it would be nice to um, try and experience the novel again, but in Spanish. So he's been wanting me to <laughs> like read uh, in Spanish. So he bought and he remembered that I read By Nine in Chile by Roberto Bolaño. And so he bought it or he like special ordered it um from a bookstore we really like on that side uh of town and it arrived so this is nocturno de chile aka by night in chile like i just said <laughs> so i'm really excited to read this this is probably going to be the first uh little novella spanish novella that i will read in spanish because the only other book that i can remember attempting to read in spanish was um 100 years of solitude and that was a complete catastrophe like it was not pretty granted i was much younger and i think the uh surrealist element made it all the more like complicated to follow the story which led me to completely discard it and read it in its entirety in english which my parents were not happy about <laughs> so we're gonna give it another whirl i think starting with a shorter um work of fiction is smarter as well as one that i've already read so i won't get lost or like i'm not really concerned about the plot necessarily i'm just trying to pick up the linguistic atmosphere that the author is trying to illustrate in spanish more so than like trying to follow the plot or the characters or whatever i think i'll have a different focus since i already know the book so i'm really excited about that that's what led us to go on our little um commercial drive date that was quite nice anyways um and then another thing i purchased last week was emergent strategy by adrian marie brown i read excerpts of this when i was in college and i just remember it like blowing my mind and i saw it again at work so we got like four copies in and i was like you know what i'm gonna pick this up because i do kind of want to dabble back into i don't know just some topics and things i discussed during my undergrad that i was just talking with a friend the other day because she actually um had to read the entire thing for class and it's been like i don't know three years since we graduated and she still carries this book around she's got a bunch of annotations a bunch of sticky notes and um that's obviously a sign of a well-loved book and a cherished book because she's living in new york city so very far from where we went to school and she's still um lugging this around so i'm stoked to read this however what i'm reading now is chelsea girls by eileen miles and i'm really digging this uh collection i'm going to call it a collection of short stories because they all have to do with a central character eileen they are jumping in quite different um points in their life so I don't, i'm hesitant to call it like a novel or um like a streamline uh, chronological book because it is neither of those things but uh this is part of the stack that my friend eva gave me 
we ended up we also hung out last week but we did not we did not talk about books at all <laughs> which is actually good because i want to get her on on here and we can discuss the the books i gave her and i can discuss in depth the books that she gave me so this is one of them and this will be my reading material i've got work so i probably should stop talking to myself and get ready because this is obviously unacceptable okay. That's where we're at. I hope all of you uh, had a lovely week and are about to have a nice week. And let's see where the week takes us with our reading. Uh, if you're wondering, Ignacia, you mentioned that you took out um, No One Is Talking About This as well as The Idiot and we haven't seen you read it, bitch. Okay, here's the thing. Um, I tried to read no, no One Is Talking About This and it just, I was not in the vibe like I wasn't feeling it I tried again still wasn't feeling it had to return it so I did and the idiot actually we were doing a reorganizing of the store I'll show you that today actually because it's looking beautiful um and we found a copy of the I'll get it we found a copy of the idiot but in large in large print which I don't mind at all um in large print and she gave it to me which I thought was lovely and I'm really happy to have this in my collection. So I returned it and I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm, I'm in no hurry now that I own her. So I'm just gonna wait until the time is right. Um, feeling like a little love story, feeling like I wanna get emotional because I feel like I might like cry. I feel like people cry when they read this book, although I might be mistaken, I don't know. But anyway, so that's why um, you're not gonna see either of those books um, in this in this reading blog just because I uh, returned them and now I own this one so anyways that's where we're at folks um, catch up with you in a little gonna enjoy my tea look outside and ponder life's biggest mysteries <laughs>
I love them to death. I met the owner today. She was lovely and I gave her an idea. So they sell room sprays, but they're room spray uh, that um, match the candle scents. And they are super natural. They just have essential oils, witch hazel and distilled water. And I was like, I don't see why I can't spray that on myself. And that is what I do. They have this bitter orange and amber scent that I, it's my go-to. I use it every day uh, in case you're wondering what I smell like, which nobody was wondering that. <laughs> but yeah, and it's the cheapest perfume I've ever bought. It's like $24, delicious, so nice. It like clings to your clothes and you just smell delicious. So anyways, we got a new order in and I was telling her about this weird thing that I do and she's like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking of creating little roller um, scents, especially for the holidays, but I wasn't sure if people would be into it. And I was like, sister, I would be all over that. I would sell that for you, no problem. <laughs> like, sign me up for- Okay, here they are. Love them, all time favorite. And the very first one I bought, but they're all delicious. This one smells like a delicious hot man. <laughs> uh, black tea pepper, so nice and perfect for the fall. And we've got clementine and ambrette, which is new for us, and for needle and pear is also new for us, but I just love them. Please check them out. Homecoming is where it's at. <laughs> Hi cuties, good morning. We did not do any reading yesterday. <laughs> it was such a busy day at work. We got the candle order, as you saw, and a bunch of books, and then the owners were setting up for a virtual Zoom event. Um, so there was just a lot to do, but I figured I would come on here and discuss a little bit about my thoughts on Chelsea Girls since I don't didn't do that yesterday. Oh no, I lost my page. Ah, just kidding, I found it. Um, I am really enjoying this actually. It, like I said previously, I'm treating this as a book of short stories because Eileen jumps, uh, not in chronological order, uh, and shares little snippets of their life that they see fit. So it's nice because, especially this week, I haven't had a whole lot of time to just sit down for a large chunk of time and read, but it's nice to just consume and get the essence and um, read something from beginning to end and then put it away and go do whatever it is that I have to do. Um, and they've got a very pleasant, casual way of writing. It feels like they verbatim are, are writing in the same way that they would speak to you, if that makes sense. Like it feels very conversational in style, um, which I appreciate, especially after reading, um, I can't help but contrast um, the Baudelaire Fractal, which is so like intentional and very intellectual and, and poetic. And this is more straight to the point, casual, but yet compelling and interesting in the same in the same kind of way. Obviously very different, but um, yeah, I've been really enjoying the the casualness in which they share their their stories and their crazy life. Um, similar to when somebody is talking to you and sharing stories in real life, some stories you find more compelling than others. This is the same with with this book. I've really enjoyed uh, Robin as well as the goodbye tapes and yeah so anyways i had no idea who they were before uh reading this they were a poet well they still are <laughs> they still are a poet uh critic professor really interesting person actually speaking of uh well I'll give you a little background story and I'll try not to be like super long windy, but uh, the owners of, of the bookstore I work at, they hosted an event. They're having a uh, virtual book club and the inaugural book was uh, Yuri Herrera's three novels, who I've talked to infin about infinitely in this channel. Uh, he's a Mexican author that I really love and respect. And um, Zoe, the owner, interviewed him two days ago and it was just such a treat to listen to the author themselves speak of their work so passionately and so beautifully what an eloquent beautiful speaker and just person in general that was 
um, just such a, yeah, such a treat. And it sparked something in me to um, participate in author talks and consume uh, content around the person whose work I'm reading because before starting my YouTube journey, I think I disassociated the person uh, who crafted and created the work that I was consuming and I kind of just like discarded them <laughs> and was just so focused on the story itself. Um, but since starting uh, BookTube, I've just taken a bit more care and time into researching who it is um, that I'm choosing to read and who's behind the words that I'm reading, right? Um, and the Yuri Herrera talk, uh, like I said, sparked something in me to seek out the voices of the people that I'm reading. So I actually found a talk by, or an interview um, with Eileen Miles and I listened to them um, yesterday, like I would, it, it, was a, it was on YouTube, but I listened to it as if it was a podcast and I was just on the bus listening. And it was such an enriching experience once again, because it gives you more of a fuller uh, perception or understanding of the work that they're producing. And it kind of almost creates this missing link oftentimes that um, you don't get if you don't know who's behind the words that you're reading, like I said, right? So, and especially with a figure like Eileen Miles, they were quite a prolific, important um, figure in the artistic scene of uh, New York City during the time of Andy Warhol, Patti Smith. I mean, all these, all these people that were in that same circle back then, and um, they just have so many crazy stories and experiences to share. And just hearing the voice of the author themselves is is so cool. And um, if there's anything you can take away from this, is maybe look up uh, a talk um, or an er interview given by whoever it is that you're reading, just to give you a different perspective, right? Hi cuties, happy Halloween. Um, I'm wearing the typical black outfit. However, these are kind of fun Halloween-esque pants, are they not? Here. <laughs> um, I tried to get a little festive, although I'm not one to dress up. I think I just like overdid it with dressing up because when I was younger, all of my birthdays were uh, dress up parties. So now at the old age of 24, uh, I'm burnt out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, planning to finish Chelsea Girls today. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a quiet day because it's gorgeous out, so I presume there's going to be a lot of people in, but I just got in to work, um, had to do a few things behind the scenes, and then do some, do some reading. Be November 1st, um, otherwise known as Charlie's birthday month, um, he is going to be 30, <laughs> just kidding, he's not 30 yet, <laughs> he's turning 26. Um, November 23rd. So why was I? Oh, because it's November. Um, in case you're wondering, no, I did not do anything for Halloween. I did not dress up. I did feel a little bit bad because there were several little kids that came into the bookstore and I had no candy for them. And I was like, but you look super cute though. <laughs> um, we just watched the last episode of uh, Squid Game, which the ending, mm, not sure if I loved, I don't know. You let me know what you thought. I was like, why, actually no, I'm not gonna spoil it. Do not worry, you can continue to watch because I'm not gonna spoil. Anyways, yeah, so we watched the end of Squid Game or the last episode. I finished Chelsea Girls at work and I'm like obsessed with Eileen Miles. <laughs> you know what I was telling you that I watched an interview that they um, had, well, I've watched several since then. And dare I say, it's like my new favorite, uh, thing to watch on YouTube, like author interviews or author talks. Um, I watched one with Eileen and Chris Krause and loved it. I will also link it downstairs and it's made me appreciate this book a lot more just cause now I have some notion of who this person is. Um, which I guess if you're like in the poetic 
sphere, you'd know who Eileen Miles was. I had no idea before I picked this up. Um, yeah, loved this book. Uh, collection of short stories about their lives. And it's interesting because in those videos, we get kind of an insider look into the stories and the intention behind them. And Eileen is very um, adamant about wanting to use their experiences as um, subjects for their work, as opposed to making up some fictionalized stories because they're like, I mean, these things happened to me and they're interesting, so why not just share them? Like, I don't need to make shit up to make it sound interesting because my life is very interesting and ripe with themes and content um, to write about. So that's what I'm gonna do. Anyways, um, super honest, um, I think depiction of a person wanting to develop, eat, breathe, and live in their craft, but also struggle immensely financially. So yeah, loved it. Some stories, like I said before, uh, stuck with me more than others. I love their raw honesty. I love the depiction of queer sex and just how unapologetic they are, especially because this book came out in the 90s. And I presume that there wasn't a lot of this kind of work circulating around um, where we're just dipping into a person's mundane everyday life while discussing their art while discussing their romantic relationships while discussing the space in which they inhabit that being new york city so i think this was probably um quite a unique and kind of pioneer in terms of this kind of autobiographical uh mode of sharing your life and your stories and what you want to say and put out in the world um Eileen Miles in that moment, um, identifying as a queer woman and sharing that experience. Um, so yeah, absolutely loved it. If you happen to come across this book, it's got the icky seal of approval. Our next read, which remember when I said that we were not going to read any of the books I mentioned in my last reading vlog? Have I mentioned how much of a mood reader I am? Yes. Uh, was not planning on reading this anytime soon, but today, the day just spoke to me and this is what I was in the mood for. So this is what I'm about to go and start. Yeah, it's kind of a rainy day, gloomy, and this is the kind of mood I was in, so here we are. It's just funny because I <laughs> specifically said, like, I'm not gonna be reading, like, let's just rewind Actually, you know what? No, let's not do that because my editing skills are not that advanced. <laughs> but we all remember me being like, yeah, we're not gonna read The Idiot and we're not gonna read Nobody's Talking About This. And here we are. So yeah, this is gonna be a uh, The Idiot reading vlog. We'll see how I get on. I'll probably sit down for an hour or two. I was gonna go to the gym with Charlie, but things have changed. My mood has changed and I do not, do not want to work out. <laughs> I want to be right there for the next two hours. Good morning, we are back at work. <laughs> My hair's shorter. Um, I impulsively cut it all off a couple days ago. Well, not all off, but um, I had kind of long hair, like not the longest it's ever been, but uh, I was tired of it. So I went into the bathroom and I just dropped it. So. Good thing my hair's wavy because I think it's more, my hair's more forgiving. Uh, outfit check because we are all dying to see my outfit, I know. Um, I'm wearing these pants, which I call the mermaid pants. These are like slightly flared and they're green velvet. Kind of extra, but 
that's me. <laughs> and my grandma's sweater that I recently got and I'm in love with. It's so cozy and perfect for, I was gonna say cold rainy days, but it's actually a gorgeous day out. I walked part of the way here, hence why we are very early. Okay, now to book related talk. I am about 206 pages into the idiot, granted large print. <laughs> So like a third of the way and I am loving it so far. Oh my gosh, it is such a cute story and it's like painfully relatable. So we are following the main character who is a uh, Turkish gal who is going to uh, or is entering her first year at Harvard. And we are following her day-to-day -day life as a new student, a new young adults in the world discovering and pondering different aspects of life, language, the classes she's drawn to. She goes to this Russian seminar and starts developing this crush on this older guy. His name is Ivan. And they start a email correspondence and that only leads her to like him even more. And boy, is that relatable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when a relationship exists exclusively online, I think um, this is the first of its kind because this book is uh, set at the start of the like internet world, internet era. Um, email has just become a thing, so it's quite a novel, uh, different way of communicating that wasn't really available to young people or people in general before then. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see that play out in this book. And I just love the main voice. Um, Celine is adorable. She's quite funny. Yeah, I'm just, the dialogue is great. Um, her inner, inner monologue is so cute. I'm just loving it. It's such a cute book. I thought it was, I don't know where I got the vibe that this was going to be like a very dramatic, like sad girl book, but so far i'm loving it it's such a joy to read and i can so relate to celine and her struggles with finding this having this like unattainable like first love you know you know okay i'm not spoiling anything but i just want to say celine is such a fearless queen because sister just wrote to ivan and confessed her love for him via email like excuse me you think 18 or 19 year old me would have like gone up to the guy i liked or even just like via an instagram dm or a facebook message or a freaking email you think i'm gonna expose myself and say like hello like i ignacia love you i hope you feel the same like <laughs> i just would never do that but i freaking appreciate admire respect and wish that i had the balls and the confidence to express myself so vulnerably and just lay out my feelings out there for the person that i was crushing on back then so you go celine you freaking tell him Anyways, <laughs> all I'm trying to say is big round of applause for Celine. I wish I had that energy, that fearless energy in me at that age, but alas, I never confessed my love for any of my crushes until like three years ago <laughs> with my current partner. So anyways, yeah, oh, I love this book. It's so, so good, love her. Hello, good morning, how are we? I for one got rained on really freaking hard. Um, I was running late and I didn't realize it was raining as hard as it was, but I was like, girl, we can't go back. Like you're gonna have to suffer and just run. So, so I did. Uh, what's happening? I did not do any reading yesterday because Charlie had his amateur kickboxing fight and he won. Yay! <laughs> it's been a good month for this kid. Um, so we did that. I was like shitting myself and my dad was sitting next to me and he's like, woman, relax. Like it's going to be okay. <laughs> um, and sure enough it was. So that happened. Um, so yeah, because it's such a quiet rainy day, I hope to do a lot of reading today and perhaps finish the idiot that I'm still just absolutely devouring and loving. 
Um, I noticed all my faves uploaded today. You know what happens? Like all of your favorite peeps just decide to upload on the same day and you're just like, yes, that's how I feel. <laughs> So uh, uh, it's gonna be a good lunch break is all I'm gonna say. That's about it. Uh, pretty pretty mellow day. I, like I said, I just wanna hopefully see how the story concludes and um, tell you about it without spoiling anything. Okay, we're doing a bit of reading and Ivan, I think, is a bit of a fuck boy. Let me tell you, this line, I read it and I was like, boy, have I been there. <laughs> they're writing a like he's writing this email correspondence because she's like you know what fuck this i'm over you i don't think this is healthy like what am i doing and then homeboy slips into her dms or gmail account or whatever it is that they use in 1995 but he's like dear blah, blah blah i won't try to talk to you anymore if there's a misunderstanding you want to talk about i'm ready to do it and if there is and if there are misunderstandings, misunderstandings you don't want to deal with, that's fine too. He had thought a lot, he said, about whether to keep meeting me. Lately, he was really into existentialism. The existentialist said you couldn't make decisions based on pre-existing norms or codes, which were always too general for any given case. When a man cites like any sort of philosopher, any sort of shit like this, he, that's a red flag red red flag like, they're just trying to be soft boy like i still really like you though but like i'll respect your boundaries but like hits you up at midnight or calls you and he's like where are you at you know what i mean so ivan i'm on to you i am on to you like i thought he was sweet but then i'm like you're actually just dragging this poor girl along i thought homeboy had broken up with his girlfriend i guess not and he's still like taking her out on all these dates calling her writing her all these emails like get out of here get out of here let this girl go <sighs> good morning it is my day off today so we have just been relaxing and enjoying our alone time by our, I mean me and kitties. <laughs> I finally simmered down from yesterday's realization. The author is so freaking good at perfectly illustrating this type of relationship and point in a young person's life where you finally find yourself in the company of somebody who stimulates you intellectually and you're having these conversations that you've never had with somebody before and things just start to click and you are like enamored by the intensity and authenticity and newness of these kinds of conversations and people and you're effervescing and their company that you end up being like either for, too forgiving or neglect to acknowledge the like red flags or the problematic nature of um their like actions or you know their shortcomings because you're so wrapped up in all the other good things that this person brings to the table like I said just like their intellectual curiosity and um the kinds of topics you discuss with them that you that almost like takes over um and makes you not look at the person critically almost so it's exactly what's going on here like Celine is just so enamored by Ivan that she disregards or you know like doesn't necessarily care about him like leading her on and the fact that he has like a girlfriend and yet is like I said yesterday like taking her out on all these like outings and engaging in all these elaborate email exchanges and all these things so yeah I'm loving it I don't know maybe it's because I like have been there where she, I've, I've been Celine okay that has been me when I was a fresh little naive daisy at tender age of 18 and it's just so relatable and so well done and so well crafted and you understand where she's coming from you understand the frustration but also the like commitment to like keep at it and not cut ties with this like shitty fuck boy <laughs> um so yes she is now in hungary 
uh, gonna go do her English teaching thing, aka be closer to Ivan, obviously. Like, sister isn't there to teach rando Hungarians how to say hello. She's there to be close to Ivan. Like, we all get it. We've been there. <laughs> so that's where I'm at in the story. I think I have 150 more pages, so I think I'm going to finish it today. Um, But yeah, I mean, this book is a such a trip. So fun. Like I said, about a million times at this point. So freaking relatable and... Uh, I hope this has convinced you to pick it up. Uh, if you're like me and you've been hearing the fanfare and love around this book but never picked it up yourself, maybe this is like your sign to go do that because I don't think you'll regret it. And even if you haven't been in a situation like Celine and Ivan, it's still just such a joy and fun thing to read that you won't be disappointed. Look who we have here. Hello, mister. <laughs> He loves following me around. He's always just like looking at me with his like big eyes. Anyways, we have finished the idiot. It is much later on in the day. We left the house. We did some errands. We did some things. And among those things was finish our beloved. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this novel. I am so happy that I read it. I wish I could have read it sooner, to be honest. Um, yeah, it was, I want to say one thing though, that I know that I have like focused entirely on, um, Ivan and Celine's relationship, but truthfully, I would not categorize this as like a romance because in actuality, the story itself does not center around Ivan and Celine's romance per se. I mean, that is just a means through which to explore and talk about um like interpersonal relationships her navigating this point in her life um the importance of language which I would argue is like the central like theme and what the story kind of focuses on and is is uh, preoccupied with exploring that um and linguistics and all that good stuff so yeah I just want to point that out so you know what you're getting yourself into. I wouldn't call this like a romance novel. Yeah, I, I would argue that um, the conversations that Celine has, other characters in the book figure just as much as um, the conversations and dialogue between her and Ivan. For example, she's got her bestie in this um, novel. They have really interesting, thought-provoking conversations as well as Celine's mother. Um, is a voice we hear in the novel as well as Celine's uh, host family when she goes to Hungary. So there are other conversations, other figures that are important in the story. Um, I would say that it's truly a coming of age and um, analysis and um, deep dive into Celine and this kind of encapsulating this very important moment in her young adult life really is, is how I'm going to categorize it <laughs> but yeah I really loved it like I said um I don't know again where I thought that um this was going to be like a sad read or like super emotional and gripping I mean it was gripping but not not in the way that I thought so yeah anyways um let me know if you've read it I know a lot of you have and left a lot of lovely comments, which I think subconsciously influenced my choice to pick it up when I did. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that. Good way to spend my day uh, reading for most of it. And yeah, I will see you all very soon. Let me know what I should read next, although I have an idea because I did go to the library and pick something up. So you're just gonna have to stay tuned and see what that is. <laughs> all right, I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.